Good morning. Welcome to the channel. It's going to be a day. Got a lot of storms coming through. Uh, thank God it's going to be during the day, not, not at night like uh, Oklahoma got some pretty nasty stuff yesterday. Uh, last night, uh, a lot of bad tornadoes went through. We have been spared here for the last two days. We've had nothing, but that ends today. I'm looking at the radar now. We've got stuff coming. It doesn't look as intense as what what they've had the last few days. It pretty much stayed to the west of us. And now it's coming up right through us. Uh, by the end of the day, I think it should be over. Mostly a lot of rain. And you guys have dug back in my videos. You know I'm not a fan of flooding. We've had that happen here. So today will be a good test. Uh, tornadoes are no joke. I've lived through several of them. Uh, the worst one I remember, I was eight years old, June 8th, 1974. Uh, we, I think my father, he was probably 30 years old. Uh, me, my two younger brothers, and my mother had an apartment in the center of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And, and anybody that's been to Tulsa, it's like, the heaven for apartment likers because they're everywhere and they still are today. They are everywhere in Tulsa. If you can't get an apartment in Tulsa, you can't get one. I hate apartments. So we had a major tornado on June 8, 74. Uh, I remember getting herded into the bathtub. My dad took a mattress. So we all went in there. I think he was out watching it. I can't remember. I do remember the next morning we came out, there was another apartment complex next to ours, and it was gone, totally. I mean, it, it wiped out everything all the way around us, and it didn't touch ours. And I'd never seen damage like that in my entire life. We drove around the city. Uh, we lived, we went by Oral Roberts University, which, you know, had all these future, uh, ris futuristic looking buildings, uh, a lot of damage. Homes leveled to, to just to the foundation. There was some that was just a clean foundation. It had blown everything away. So to tornadoes are definitely not fun to live through. Uh, basically, there's nothing you can do to stop them. So in my situation here, you know, being nestled in between two mountains helps, but it doesn't eliminate the threat. Uh, I'm just, you know, keep. I'm going to be out there filming. <laughs> what we do get here is a lot of straight line winds. Uh, it's like a, a wind tunnel through here. Uh, my front door faces the north. The south is almost directly behind me. And usually the weather will come from the southwest. And I can pretty much see when it's coming. Uh, although the mountains back there, you don't know what's coming over that. And the thing about mountains is when there's a tornado, a, a tornado pulls hot air off the ground, okay? And at the same time, you've got cold air that wants to fall, while the, and it's sucking this hot, and, then, and the, the warm wa uh, air wants to rise. So when they meet, you know, they start a twirling. There you go with a tornado. Uh, but the mountains, the difference in terrain uh, elevation breaks that up. Uh, house has been here since 1980, so, but you never know when it's going to happen. But I don't think we're getting that, you know, I don't see the pink and the dark and the bright reds. It's more orange and yellow, so it's mostly rain. Now, I just got back from town. I, I made a break for it because I know I'm not going to get a break the rest of the day. There are trees down and power lines down. And I looked on my camera. I didn't see anything that happened. But in the area I live, it is very common, just five miles down a road, to get a massive storm and we get nothing here. I've, I've worked in town where it rained all day long and come home 13 miles to my place and it, it never rained all day. So we get weird weather patterns like that. Uh, you just never know what it's going to do. So I would not want to be in a trailer living in this part of the country, especially a travel trailer. If you're one of them, get the heck out, you hear something coming. 
But I did have the fifth wheel here for a long time, and, you know, I, I was in it. I remember that thing rocking pretty good, but it never, you know, tried to tip over on me. So last night, I get up this morning. We'll start with that. I get up this morning, and first thing I do, I turn on my monitor up here, and I look. Well, I don't see Waldo in the dog apartment, and it's pouring down rain. I know he's probably not outside, and if he is, he might be in the dog house. So I get some milk bones. I go out there. Still, no Waldo. I hope, you know. And then I hear something in the screen patio. And I, well, I noticed the door was open to the dog apartment. The door had somehow got open. And I pull, played back the cameras and I heard some hideous noise. And then next thing I know, they're in there walking in and out of the screen patio. Lily goes out there. Waldo goes out there. Then they come back in. Waldo gets a drink. Then the door must have sucked shut, and Waldo stuck out on the screen patio from about 1 a.m. to when I got up at 5 this morning. He had dumped over, I've got my clothes hamper out there, and he had dumped it over and taken out my dirty clothes and made him a little nest out of it. And that's where he spent the night. Uh, thank God the outside door was shut. So I, once I discover Waldo's in there, I go, I come back in to grab the milk bones to lure them back in, and he comes in the cabin. And Rooster hears him, hears his paws tapping on the. She comes running out of her biscuit, and I'm like, ah, oh, Rooster's very defensive, but she knows Waldo, and she just was wagging her tail, went up to Waldo, sniffed him, you know, no. You know, nothing, nothing bad happened, and that's good because as Waldo ages, uh, I'm going to eventually have to bring him and Lily inside the cabin. Uh, I don't really like dogs inside the house, uh, but he, you know, depending on how he ages and everything, he can't be out there. And, you know, it's, it's still comfortable out there, but... Yeah, he may need care that he needs to be inside and he can't hear nothing. So that probably scared him even more. Uh, but if he loses his sight, he's definitely going to have to come in here with me so I can take care of him better. Uh, but whatever, however it goes down, he will have good care. So I am going to prepare today for flooding. I got to go out to screen patio, get some things off the ground. It's a mess out there. Move that guttering outside to where it's going to funnel the rain out. Uh, I don't expect us to get too too bad of storms, but man, you never know. Uh, you know, back in 1974 when we had that bad tornado, we didn't have the technology we do today, so nobody really knew. And the only way you knew is when the tornado sirens went off. Well, you can't. We don't have them where I live. Uh, if you listen, if, if, if you get a certain break, you can, might hear it from town, but not very loud. So I'm not worried about tornadoes today more than I'm worried about flooding. So I've got the truck pulled in the carport. We'll see how it goes, but uh, those people at that meetup, I don't know who schedules things like that. You, if you grow up in Oklahoma or this part of the country, you know, you know, don't schedule nothing for any time in April, any time in May, in the first two weeks in June. After that, you might be okay, but you don't spend, uh, you know, you don't go to any camping events or any of that in Oklahoma that time of year. You're asking for trouble, especially right now. It is the beginning of it, so hopefully those people are smart enough to pack up and go. And leave. It's more, you know, them things aren't important. Get out of there because they are coming there today. They're already there raining. So I'm sure everybody's packed up and left. But they should have enough sense to know that. But why they schedule these things. That's why I don't go to them. I'm not an idiot. I'm not going to that stuff this time of year. Get caught out in bad weather. Anyway, guys, uh, I'll be fine here. Uh, I've got to do a little. I'm going to dig out one of my power solar power banks a couple of them get them ready just in case power goes out i did see the power company down the road there was some uh there's a farm where there are some power lines down why i don't know i didn't see anything on my camera coming through but 
apparently it did but yeah tornadoes are not to be played with um it, there was one town sulfur oklahoma it just wiped the whole downtown area out last night it was pretty bad so i'm not you know i don't really have a shelter or nothing i never will have a shelter uh just don't believe in that i want to see what's going on so nobody's ever going to convince me or most oklahoma people you know if i had a family yes it would be a different story but I'm going to be in here with my dogs, and if we go down, we go down. It's the way it goes. That's That was the plan in the first place, I guess. So I could think of a lot worse ways to go. Eh, not really, but, you know, we won't talk about that. All right, guys, I'm going to get this uploaded, and I'm going to cook something today, too. That's a nice thing about that induction cooktop. If I cook with one burner... It's only drawing 500 watts, and that's that's full. That's on high, and I can cook on that for quite a while with one of my bigger solar units. So it can be used when the power goes out. Yeah, and the internet will probably go out. You know, it's Starlink. We don't have fiber yet. We're supposed to have it, but we don't. All right, everybody, stay safe if you're in the zone. Happy trails.